Okay, this is intended to be part three of a beginner guide that I'm putting together for Orbiter 2010, the space flight simulator. Now I'm assuming that you've already watched part one and part two. If you haven't, then you should stop this video and go and watch part one and part two and then come back here. So this video is going to basically pick up on the concepts that were already covered in part one and part two. And we're just going to add more control to the shuttle this time. But before we take off this time, since we're going to start leaning toward the idea of getting into a proper orbit, we're going to want to set up a couple of things before launch, or at least one thing. This readout is going to start becoming more important as you're attempting to start making proper orbits. And I'm not going to get too technical with any of this right now. It's too advanced. But just press the DST button. And that will change this from PER, APR. You'll see those. That'll change it to PEA and APA. And without getting into too much detail, all I want to explain is that the apoapsis, that's APA, is our highest point of orbit. And this is one thing that we're going to be looking at on this launch. We're going to be looking at a couple of these things on this launch, but mainly the apoapsis and the PEA. So let's go ahead and get started. And we're going to try to launch the same way we did before, you know, pressing the plus key, holding it, then tapping control to lock the engines, then using four and six to control the roll, and then when we are at the proper altitude, we're going to want to pitch over, but we're going to add an additional set of keystrokes that's going to make this launch substantially more difficult, relatively speaking, than the prior ones. We're going to add the 1 and 3. That's going to control the yaw. The yaw will control our heading. And we need our heading, we want our heading to be approximately 90 degrees. It does not have to be perfect. If it's 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, anything like that will be fine. Somewhere in the ballpark of 90. And I'll explain as we go the timing on pressing those buttons. But for starters, when you first launch, don't worry about it. Just do what you did before. Four and six, four and six, that's it. And then we'll, once we get things lined up, then we'll worry about the heading. So pressing control, or excuse me, plus, holding it, tapping control to launch, and here we go. Now this time, I'm having to press four to bring the roll around and that just that's just because of the way it launched at this time. Now as soon as I've got that rolled up right where I want, I'm gonna press five the kill rotation. Then I'm going to start pressing one to bring the roll around. And as I do that, notice that it's affecting my roll, which is why this is a little more difficult. So I'm pressing 1 to adjust my heading, I'm trying to bring the heading around to 90, and as I do that, I'm also having to press 4 in order to keep the roll upright. Now I'm pressing 1 again, trying to bring the heading around, now I'm pressing 4. Pressing 1 a little bit more, trying to bring the heading around, pressing 4, and we are getting pretty close to 90 degrees. Pressing 1 a little bit more, and we're basically at 90, so now I'm going to kill rotation, and I need to immediately start pitching over, because we're getting pretty high up in the sky at this point. So now I'm pressing 2, and I accidentally had my kill rotation on, so that's why it took so long to pitch over. And usually I can do that a lot faster, but trying to explain it as I was going made it a little more difficult. As soon as the horizon comes into view, stop pitching over. 
So you can see where our hands are pretty full on that launch. But everything's okay. So let's take a look at our situation. We are rolled in the right direction. Our heading is good. And before we get too far along, I'm going to take a quick peek at the external camera. Just kind of knew that that was the right timing for the external tank, or excuse me, the solid rocket boosters to separate. So let's watch those fall away for a second. Okay, let's get back in the flight deck. Now what we want to do here, this number that I told you about, the APA, Apoapsis, that's the highest point of orbit. We need this to eventually be more than 150, and I'm not going to get into why. We need it to be more than 150, we, but we would like it to stay under 400. So let's just, every now and then we'll take a look down here, just to make sure that this is climbing to the point that it'll be more than 150, and that we keep it under 400. It's a pretty broad range, shouldn't have too many problems there. The other number that we want to keep an eye on is this. This is APT, or time to apoapsis. This is how far away we are to the highest point of orbit. As we're launching, the highest point of orbit should continually climb up to a point, and we want to make sure that the time to that highest point of orbit is always in front of us. Because if you think about it, if the highest point of orbit is behind us, that means we're going down. That means we've already crossed the highest point of orbit, and we're now going down. And we don't want to go down until we've already established a circular orbit around the Earth. <coughs> so I can't really do too much time acceleration here. So we just kind of have to ride this one out. Got our heading approximately 90 degrees, good enough. Rolled to the position that we want to be rolled in. Apoapsis is more than 150, it's less than 400, we're happy with that. And the APT, that's the time to the highest point of orbit, is 50, I'm happy with that. As long as this is more than say, let's call it 2025, we're happy with that. Uh, we, on the other hand, we don't really necessarily want the time to apoapsis to become like, you know, a thousand or something. We want it to stay fairly low at this point. We want the highest point of orbit to be in front of us, but not too far in front of us at this point. And the way we can control this, if it starts becoming a problem, is by pitch. We can pitch up or down as needed. If we pitch down, like this, then that should push this number, that'll make this number go eventually lower. And if we pitch up, that'll make the point, the highest point of orbit further ahead of us and this number will increase. Right now it's holding pretty even. APA is more than 150. We're happy with that. It's less than 400. We're happy with that. Heading is 90 degrees or approximately. We're happy with that. We are rolled to the position we want to be rolled toward. Happy with that. And the time to apoapsis is 50 seconds, and I'm okay with that. As the apoapsis increases, we do want to pitch down a little bit because we want to control what our highest point of orbit is. We don't just want to let it become whatever. So if I want to control it a little better, I can pitch down, and that should stop it from climbing too terribly high. But I also want to watch my uh, 
my time to have elapses so it doesn't become zero or ten or something low. The approximate velocity for orbit will be when this is 7,500, which stands for 7.5 kilometers per second, or 7,500 meters per second. And that's actually slightly different than orbital velocity. <coughs> Looks like we can pitch down a little more, because the time to apoapsis is still increasing, and our apoapsis is still climbing. And I don't really care to have it go much higher than it already is. So I'm going to continue to pitch down a little bit just to keep that time to apoapsis under control. And if you remember in the last video, I mentioned that the green line, or the green circle, can be thought of as the pattern that we are falling, and we are going to try to make this so that we fall all the way around the Earth. Pitch down some more. Time to apoapsis is getting up there, and our apoapsis is still climbing, so we can pitch down a little bit. As the circle starts to close up, we are far enough. That's that's good enough. Even though you do want it to eventually be completely wrapped around, at this point we're close enough, and I'll explain why in a second. For now, we can jettison the external tank. Before we do that, we should roll over by pressing 6 or 4. <coughs> Good enough. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then press J to jettison the tank. And the last thing for this lesson is the timed apoapsis. We're going to get to that point and then and then finish circular circularizing this orbit. So press T, accelerate time a little bit, and we don't want to get we don't want that to get it out of control. So don't press T a bunch of times. When you get down to about 100 seconds, go back to real time. Press this button to go to the prograde position. And once you get to about 60 seconds, more or less, then press the plus key to start the ohms engine. And we won't worry about the fact that this is out of... Um, that the ohms engine is needs to be pitched, we won't worry about that. Now I'm going to press T because this is a long burn. And you can see that this circle is really starting to become perfectly wrapped around the edge. Once the PEA is approximately the same as the APA, then we have a good orbit. But really, the PEA only needs to be 
more than 150. As long as it's more than 150, you've got a good orbit. That is it for this lesson. If you've accomplished this, congratulations. But just press the DST button and that will change this from PER, APR, you'll see those. That'll change it to PEA and APA. And without getting into too much detail, all I want to explain is that the apoapsis, that's APA, is our highest pin. Go and watch part one and part two and then come back here. So this video is going to basically pick up on the concepts that were already covered in part one and part two. And we're just going to add more control to the shuttle this time. But before we take off this time, since we're going to start... Okay, this is intended to be part three of a beginner guide that I'm putting together for Orbiter 2010, the Space Flight Simulator. Now I'm assuming that you've already watched part one and part two. If you haven't, then you should stop this video. Point of orbit. And this is one thing that we're going to be looking at on this launch. We're going to be looking at a couple of these things on this launch, but mainly the apoapsis and the PEA. So let's go ahead and get started. And we're going to try to launch the same way we did before, leaning toward the idea of getting into a proper orbit. We're going to want to set up a couple of things before launch, or at least one thing. This readout is going to start becoming more important as you're attempting to start making proper orbits. And I'm not going to get too technical with any of this right now. It's too advanced. 